Welcome to another edition of the Dental Today podcast. Thank you for stopping by. This is brought to you by Lab Media TV. My name is Hezekiah Morales, and here we go. Remember to follow us on social media at Lab Media TV. This last February in Chicago during LMT's Lab Day, I had the opportunity to visit with a dental technician professional at his lab located at the heart of Chicago. Once back from Chicago, I realized I had technical issues with the footage. Thankfully, we were able to recover all this footage, and now I hope you enjoy this two-part phenomenal interview with Mr. Oliver Trick. The, the standard of the, the product that is being rendered is the number one priority in the forefront of, yep. what, you're, of what you're doing, and that is supported by not only experience, but continued education. So how important are the shows, like Lab Day, or like uh, di different kind of shows, how important do you think they are? But they're important if uh, people know how to select the right lectures. You know, the problem is they are organized not by comp corporations. So it's just more like a sales pitch. It's very, uh, very few technicians or dentists who are gonna come and gen just educate patients. When I give a lecture, my audience is my priority. I want to share my knowledge, my passion, my techniques, my protocol. I'm not there. I'm being paid by companies in the States. And that's important to see the difference. You know, I'm being invited in Europe, but there are a group of professionals who are inviting me. In the United States, the problem is a company is going to put together a lecture. So most speakers have to push the product. So that's, you know, it's a waste of time sometimes to go to symposiums or, or uh, you know, events like the lab day. I don't really go, to be honest with you. I selected the two lectures I wanted to see because there are some pure professionals who are really, really there, passionate about education and sharing their knowledge. So those guys are the guys to see. I'm not the only one. You know, there are plenty, but less and less. That's a problem. So, and I completely understand where you're coming from. I, that's one of the reasons... Uh, th that's one of the reasons for for many many conversations that we've had uh, on certain topics. So, m so my question would be the following: the people that are inspired by your work, yes, inspired by the philosophy behind your result, where could they, where could they see you here in the states? Because we know you go over in my laboratory here. here. So <laughs> yeah, we have courses here. Yes. Actually, we mentioned uh, Edwin, our friend, yes. from uh, Santo Domingo, but he came here. Yes. My, my first course, I believe he attended the first class I had last year. Yeah, we have, we host uh, up to 15 uh, technicians here. And, uh, you know, it's full of, uh, you know, people from all around the world. I'm very lucky to bring, to be able to be, you know, um, known in many countries. How often? As, oh, we do three a year, two a year. This year, I only have one or two. Uh, but yeah, I'm busy with uh, other trips uh, all, all around the world or in other countries. But uh, you know, lectures and classes here. I'm trying to do two a year, and uh, we have one coming up in May, and sold out. And yeah. it's already sold out. Of course, out. of course, it is. Wow. Yeah. And so you you mentioned earlier that there is a tension with the times of your deliveries for the cases. I think most technicians, because we don't. We are not good at keeping up with our calendar. There is, you know, there is an extra case. We are afraid to uh, maybe say no. Or, but it's very, because it's time consuming. Beautiful tea, if it takes time. People and, but, don't realize it. And you're constantly traveling, teaching. So that's, no, which, not, is, yeah. which is part of your passion as well. Of course. It's part of your passion. And you're, you're, you're married, you have uh, your studio and you're teaching as well. How do you balance all this? How do you consolidate this? in your life to stay as successful as you had, have all these years? Being organized and being honest, I think we become more honest with, uh, with our schedule, with our clients. And I prefer not to, you know, to say no to some work sometimes. You know, I'm, I'm finally being able, I learned how to say no to some uh, lectures or engagements that I'm, um, I'm being invited to. You know, you feel honored to be invited to some places, but sometimes we have to say no. Or even a case, some doctors ask me, I prefer, I prefer to say no, than deliver something maybe not perfect or not as good as I would like to be. So yes, I've learned to say no. Saying no is part of your strategy it's for part balance. Of, yes, and I think it should be a part of every 
body's uh, life. Yes, we have to be, we have to be selecting the people we spend time with. You know, you have been a, a gentleman to me, so I wanted to spend time with you here to make that this, uh, this interview. But of course, everything takes time. We and we that. have to be, no, you're very welcome. You're doing something good for the profession. So I'm very thankful. What is your vision when you look at CAD CAM and the landscape of technology right now? It's a very good question. Thank you for asking. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't have any here because as I mentioned earlier, it would be downgrading the level of my work. With my expertise, my knowledge, I can achieve a way a better result with my hands, with just a few you know, ceramic and, uh, and refractory investment and layer pure glass on that. And there is no limit there in quality. You know, you achieve, you make teeth, not veneers. They just disappear in the mouth and they function like teeth also. And they age like teeth. You know, cat can technology has its place, but maybe in a large laboratory with a huge production. The small labs who think they are gonna be, they are gonna survive, and survive is not enough. We want to strive. Survive is not good, this is not success. But they push, they just delay their death, those guys. Because they are gonna invest a lot of money in CAT CAM, but they are gonna have one machine when the large lab has five. Okay? How can you how can you pay for it when the price of CAT CAM, the only way to to sell your work made with CAD CAM, which is the same tooth than your neighbor, because you guys have the same library in a CAD CAM in the software. So it's to compete to the price. It's a race to the bottom. So a small lab who's investing in that, I think is making a big mistake. He should invest in education. Wow. Not in those type of technology. But new technology is not all bad. Also, I just forgot to mention, CAD CAM, you're going to be forced to work with Zirconia. And zirconia is maybe good. The body loves it, but it's not good in the mouth. Explain that. Explain that, please. Yes. Why? Well, because it's, it breaks. It's brittle, and you can't really bond ceramic on it. Okay. There is an interface. It's the worst bond ever. So because the bond is not good, so companies are telling you know what you have to do a full zirconia, which is even lower quality because now there is no depth. It doesn't look like a tooth. People should see natural teeth. The beauty of nature, the beauty of enamel, the way it's moving, changing appearance all the time with different light. We are passionate, why? Because of natural enamel. Because we can almost match that with felspatic, with lithium disilicate, with fluoroapetite crystal, but not with zirconia. It's dead looking. This is the opposite effect or reaction or aspect than natural enamel. You lose your passion. You cannot be a passionate technician if you work with just zirconia. It's impossible. They do it, they use it, because it's the only material you can use with a milling machine. And you use a milling machine because the company told you to, because everybody does. So they think they're going to miss the train. But you know what? Some trains, it's a dead end at the end. You know, they lead to nowhere. You mentioned something very important, a phrase. You said, the library of Lab A is the same as library uh, as the Lab B. I think they can scan. Uh, they can, I'm sure, somebody will say, no, it's not true. But you understand my point. The work is very basic. There is no characterizations there. The color has to come from within. OK? There's always those guys. They are like a sect, you know. They obviously have to justify why they spent all their money. I mean, they have to convince themselves that it's the best thing ever. But to be honest with you, the price of the machine is the price of my whole lab, okay? He costs nothing to make a tooth. It costs time and love and experience. In material, it costs me $30 to make a tooth look like a tooth. A veneer or a crown look like a tooth. Their cost is much higher. And they set it much lower than mine. And, and that's, that's where I'm interested in going because you said because these two laboratories get involved with uh, technology and they don't have the experience, yes. they don't have the knowledge, what happens is, and, and in your words you said, it's a race to the bottom. That really caught my attention. I, I, I realized when I, um, when I was working with labs back in, in Fort Lauderdale, or you know, selling yes. and marketing to labs, yes. 
that so many labs that were 12 months, two years ago, they were there on Google. I went to the place to knock on the door. They're gone. And it was empty. Thank you for saying that. I have another story to, co to corroborate with yours. I was doing direct marketing to fill my courses. Before we were big on Instagram or, fa or Facebook. Now I would not do direct mailing. But many years ago, I did, 10 years ago about. I remember with my wife, you know, putting those brochures in envelope, making a nice, and getting all those addresses from Google. 600 envelopes we sent. 250 came back. Almost 30%, uh, 50%, almost 50%. We were at 40% or so. Wow. There was not a second address. You know, usually the mail is being forwarded, forwarded to, the, to the new to laboratory. The no, there was no lab anymore. Those labs closed down for good. They didn't okay. just, they didn't move it to a bigger space, okay, or a smaller space. They closed, period. What's, so what, what is happening? You've been in the industry enough to have seen the progression, yes. the development of certain things, and also the demise in certain strategies. Why is the dental technician profession seem like if it's dying away, if it's being forgotten, and now AI is taking over, or different technologies? Why? Well, because, over. you know, AI, you talk about AI, yeah, that's what they use for GPS, for example. But I mean, I prefer to uh, deal with the cab driver, you know? This is real intelligence, yeah. AI, for me, is, uh, is weak. Now, if we go to the level of AI, well, AI, a machine is always cheaper than a human being. So if we become stupid, or if we become lazy, and we don't want to work or become educated, the machine will win. Yeah, I compete with machines. I mean, I beat them. I win the game. I win. I make, I'm better than a machine. I'm smarter than a GPS. I know the streets. It's a new city for me. I was in the suburb. But I can tell you which name is the name of this street and which name is which street we have on the on the on the on the north going north or you know in two, three, four, five streets. I know the city now. And I'm interested. If I were an Uber driver, I would be a good one. Because I would know the city. I would not rely on a machine. You know, the problem of people they got lazy. Mm. So technicians they did it to themselves, to be honest with you. You know, you make your bed, you sleep in it. Mm. So you have a good opportunity today as a laboratory technician. You can be a king, to be honest with you. You can be very successful. But we have to be smart, aware of what we do, what we use, what we invest in it. I would invest, if I were younger, I would invest in education, not in a machine. I would become very good. That was my attitude 30 years ago, and still my attitude today. I don't feel bad for them. Technicians did it to themselves. By, by what I'm hearing you say, technology is not so much the problem as it is the industry going towards a reliance to and using it as a crutch rather than growing in the knowledge. You know, yeah, the companies are selling, selling machines. Why? Because we're buying them. If people are not buying machines, those companies will move to the next feared. If they say, well, there is no potential buyers there, those guys are not stupid, they're not buying the machine. Machines are, haven't been developed to increase the quality. The machines have been developed to go to do more. They fit in a big lab. And, uh, you know, but big labs, how many do we have in this country? Most labs are five technicians lab. And those laboratories don't need a machine. They should just invest in education, become good, the machine will not even touch them. And the price will be higher. The problem is when everybody charges less money, well, even the people on top, like me, had to lower their fees. And I would be a liar not to say this. Because many people pretend to charge a certain price, but they don't. And we know that. Because they can't. Because they can't. I charge 40% less than I was charging 10 years ago. When I work with dentists, yes. But that's at the beginning of my end too. And that's very important for me to be very honest about this because I see it, I'm very aware. But at the same time, because I got popular and I got known even with, among patients. And one patient happy starts to talk about me, brings two patients. 
So those patients, me referring them to doctors, I charge my own fees, which is not even enough, to be honest with you. I like to charge much higher than that, and I should. But we will. We will because I have plans for the future. You know, I have a plan that is adapted to the situation of today. Mm. So, and healthcare. Does healthcare ever, the, the, the modern healthcare yeah. in this country, and maybe in this state, does it, does it affect you at all? In some, uh, for some situations, yes. I have doctors who unfortunately had to, you know, because they were not in the city, they were in a suburb, and they had to sign contract with healthcare or with uh, some companies. You know, like I wouldn't, it doesn't matter to, to, to the name of, the, of, of uh, some of them, but they force them to charge a certain price. So people who are accepting those insurance companies are forced to charge only 1100 for a tooth. When 1100 is supposed to be the price of a good laboratory. So that means those doctors, and I have one of my clients, to be uh, honest, was not working with companies with healthcare with uh, you know uh, those uh, health yeah what the Africa's companies now he's actually he has a contract with one of them, and he's forced you know to charge a certain price which is less than he was charging, but he sees them he sees that as being a, a way to have referrals, right. so being re, being referred patient to is you know being able to refer patient is a strength is an opportunity. And, and yes, exactly. And for him, this doctor in particular, had to sign this contract with one of those companies mm. to get new patients, mm. but they dictate the price. That's uh, and, and that's that's very interesting. I find that uh, healthcare, to a certain degree, can can damage an industry in, immensely because now not only are are dental technicians having this conversation yeah. about price, but now also doctors are having the same conversation. And it's cool too, look, and you, if you have an old client who's gonna retire, and uh, he's supposed to enjoy, you know, the, the last 20 years of his life or so with his family, and uh, you know, I have many of my doctors retired. Replacing that doctor with a young doctor is a problem, because first of all, they haven't, they haven't been exposed to this type of work, now they teach CAD CAM because those companies are very powerful. So they bring those milling machines in schools. So those young doctors, you know, maybe they are not aware of what is possible, but that's okay. It's our job to educate them, to make them dream, like my peers or older people made me, made me dream when I was younger. So that's my job to inspire them. And I think I do, you know, we have a lot of demand from young doctors, but they come out of school with huge debt. You know, the education is expensive. Mm. These people have five, six hundred thousand of debt. So how can they afford my price? It's very difficult. Mm. So I feel bad for them. They're not bad people. You know, young dentists are not bad people. They're just in trouble. They have to reimburse that. The school, the, the price mm. of education. So they are not allowed to do high quality. They are not able to mm. work with me for that reason. So now we're So they about see themselves buying a CAD CAM machine to make money to make the crowns themselves. So they can pay up their debt. They can pay the debt. And they say, well, I pay the debt and then maybe later I do high quality. Maybe okay. later I work with Olivier or with another, another great technician. Wow. So that's a big problem in the industry. You know, those wow. corporations, those CAD CAM people have destroyed the field, are destroying the field. Wow, what a, pers what a perspective. Very interesting. I, you know, when, when we, Again, we bring healthcare uh, into the conversation, and there is a particular dynamic. But now you brought education as well, and that's that's huge because it definitely makes well, sense. They 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 step out of a classroom with a piece of paper that says that they can do something. Yes, yes. Right. The problem is that that piece of paper costs them way more money than they're going to make for the next couple of years. They they take the shortcuts. Yeah. To survive, to pay to survive, for it. To pay for everything. Yeah. And they are doctors now, you know, they spent a lot of days, a lot of years working very hard, mm -hmm. and I admire that. I, I really right. I respect the, that. The commitment. But they also want to have a, a nice car and a nice apartment. So those people have debt. Right. They want a nice lifestyle. Now I'm working, open my practice, I want to make money. 
and I want you to have a BMW, a nice apartment. They do, because banks lend them money. Now they are doctors. Mm -hmm. But they have to cut something, and they cut the laboratory which very the often. End, which in the end affects the patient. Of course. Of course, my patients don't know better. They don't. But, but your patients do, though. No, I mean, yes, because in a, large, a large percentage, yes, but a lot, which means we also have to evolve with the field, you know. Now I have to be a psychologist also, because a lot of people come here to my laboratory to redo the work. They just did with somebody else. So it's revision dentistry. I have a large percentage of my cases. Wow. They just, they were done six months ago, a year ago, they failed. Wow. So it, it is important to have those people who don't trust anybody anymore because they paid a lot of money and it failed, it broke, or they have TMJ problem. So these people have been abused and they don't trust anybody anymore. So I have to like really have a different approach than 10 years ago. So now you're, you're really, it's funny, you said now I'm a psychologist because now you have to convince them of, of, the, of the experience that you have and that you understand what their need is. Yes, yeah, exactly. You have to, it's a different approach, different level of communication. Wow. And, and sometimes I have to say no to some patients. Like you, we talked about this earlier, how do I manage, you know, to be... Um, in control of my business and in control of my time, what by saying no? And you know that very often I do not accept the work from patients or from doctors, but from patients in particular because of that particular patient, wow. because of the attitude or the expectations, because they have been abused. They almost have PTSD, these people. So uh, yeah, I have a couple of uh, examples, you know, but recently I had a lady who came, who flew here from Miami and I, you know, I, I knew I was not the right person for her. And I don't know if there is one good person for her. You know, I think the expectation is so high. The abuse was, you know, a, a, a reality in her life, in her uh, previous, you know, restorations. People probably didn't do the right thing for her, but I'm not willing to, uh, to uh, do any attempt there. I said, no, no, I'm not the right technician for you. Wow. And that's, that's definitely a... Uh a reality that, uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if that patient definitely went through healthcare. Maybe, probably. Yeah, because healthcare, I think, reimburse. I'm not sure you don't have to, I, I would have to check on that. But very often they reimburse, you know, they dictate the price, but they also now dictate the type of restorations. Mm -hmm. If it's full zirconia, for example, they are going to reimburse 100%. But a full zirconia crown, is not the right thing for the occlusion, believe me. This would destroy the opposite, the opposing arch. And the, yes, of course, it wears, it destroys the other tooth. So, yeah. Very interesting conversation that's, that's going on right now. In Thank you. Dentistry, and, and I appreciate you. Being honest, you know, uh, not being a hypocrite. I'm not uh, looking for, not trying to please a company, uh, you know, to get a sponsorship or anything like this. I mean, we, I want to do what is good for the for profession. The yes, this is, you know, my life. So why lying? And I, I really appreciate your candor. And for the dental technicians that have followed you for years, that have either seen you on Instagram, have seen you at Lab Day, have yes. seen you in another country, what would you say to motivate them in light of all the things that we have spoken about, which are not necessarily all of them great things, right? Yeah. But what would you say to them to motivate them to continue in this beautiful and wonderful profession? I think, uh, I mean, I hope they understood that I believe that dentistry today is not just at its worst, it's also at its best. Because the way we practice today, you know, with the right team and the right patient, it's at best, to be honest with you. I replace, I make teeth today. I don't make veneers or crowns because the material is so good. But also new technology is not all bad. You know, you have social media, for example. It's offering, it's a window to the world. And uh, I think the opportunities are enormous today. You know, the, I see the future very bright. I'm uh, convinced that we can do great things. I have a business plan, you know, for this new laboratory here. 
and we're bringing people to work with us because we have a lot of demand. So the, 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 the future is bright, to be honest with you. I'm very optimistic, but realistic. So I know with the experience I have, I know what to buy, what not to buy, what to use, and what not to use. So, um, and, you know, the possibility, I believe in social media, but not, you know, seeking 200 likes or 300 likes, but just sending a message, you know, to the world. And, uh, you know, the uh, possibilities are enormous with it. I think we become independent, and that's a goal for any business, to be independent and to strive. So, no, the, the future is bright, to be honest with you. But it starts with education not to feel the need of being, to have a notoriety before you have the knowledge. You know, we are about substance. You know, you have to get educated first and then maybe you get famous and so you get, you know, known in your hometown to start and then maybe around the world. But you have to have something to put on the table, which is knowledge and savoir-faire, the way we say it in French, the know-how. And if you have that, honestly, the sky is the limit. Oliver, it's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you so much for thank allowing you, thank us you. to come uh, to Chicago and interview here. It's been such a phenomenal interview. I, I believe that uh, every day that I uh, have the opportunity to sit down with dental professionals, I always take so much away, and this has definitely been a great experience. I really thank you. The listeners from the Dental Today podcast appreciate your candor. We learned a lot. Thank you. And, and don't give up. You know, we can do it. I, I, I believe it, and we look forward to hearing uh, more things that you have in the future. I know that you have certain plans that you will be disclosing very soon. What is your, to, to finish off here, what is the next class that you're going to be having here this year, in the next couple of, of, of weeks? We have, um, I think the next one, the first one I have in this laboratory will be Marat uh, from Holland. Is uh, you know, again, new technology, not all bad. You know, for people afraid of doing a single centrals or single anterior teeth, he developed a software that is reading the color, and then it gives you the recipe, you know, how to match this color with, you know, the, the software, I think it gives you the ratio of different powders, different ceramics, and I mean, I've seen his work. It's fabulous, to be honest with you. So that's May 1st and 2nd. We're almost sold out. I mean, if people want to come, it's with pleasure. They have to contact us very quickly, I think. We have two spots available, but I'm trying to, you know, expose great technicians, great talents from Europe or from other places. So we have this uh, young guy who's coming from Holland, uh, May 1st and 2nd. Then it's my class, uh, but this one is sold out. I have a veneer class, veneers on refractory, that's my specialty. Mm -hmm. And, um, but that's okay, you know, for technicians, they have to get educated to one day become a speaker, because this is, this is wonderful, you know, to, to share the knowledge and inspire younger people. So I, um, I, I really push for people to get educated and I, I'm generous with my, with my passion and my knowledge. So when they come here, you know, it's very intense. Honestly, I'm, 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 I'm pushing them and I keep them until late. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have a witness, you know, Alvin has been here a few times. And I think, you know, when people come back, it's a good sign. Usually my students come back two, three times because it's very intense. They know who they deal with and uh, yeah, they love it. It's like it. a boot camp. They love it. Yeah, exactly. It's very, exactly. <laughs> That's phenomenal. Tony Robbins of us, you know, <laughs> back then John, but no, nah, but life is great, you know, and uh, they become friends. You know, it's nice. I'm blessed to have friends all around the world and now you are one of them. You know? It's a pleasure. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, we've been here with Mr. Oliver Trick at his dental studio. This is the place in Chicago where the magic happens here in Chicago. Once again, Oliver, thank you thank for you. being on the thank show you, with thank us. You. And ladies thank and you. gentlemen, leave messages on his Instagram, Facebook, follow him. There are classes that are uh, filling up for May. The, the next one he has is already filled up. So make sure that you're taking advantage of these moments for you to grow, for you to learn, and to be the best technician professional that you can be. Till next time. Oh, 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 oh,